Hello, my name is Christopher Sands. I'm a senior fellow at the Hudson Institute, and I want to address a few brief comments to the G20 meeting taking place in Pittsburgh on September 24th and 25th, 2009. The G20 is a recent creation, a group of countries representing the leading economies around the world. Originally, the members of the G20 were the finance ministers and central bank governors of Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, France, Germany, India, Indonesia, Italy, Japan, Mexico, Russia, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, South Korea, Turkey, the United Kingdom, and the United States, as well as the European Union, uh, represented both by the rotating European Union Council Presidency and also uh, by the head of the European Central Bank. Together, the G20 met to focus on aspects of the econ international economic financial architecture that affected all of the members, from regulation of transnational corporations to currency issues to international trade. In November of 2008, the G20 leaders met in Washington, this time bringing together leaders of the G20 countries, not just finance ministers and the central bankers, bringing presidents and prime ministers together to talk about what seemed to be the onset of a very serious global recession. In April of 2009, the leaders met again in London, England, and at that time decided that one further meeting in 2009 would be necessary, setting Pittsburgh as the location for a September meeting. The leaders are mostly concerned that international financial transactions be transparent and well-regulated, so that the opportunities for fraud, as well as the opportunities for any uh, sudden crash or shakeup in one country leading to a contagion economically that affects the others is quickly dealt with. So there's good communication between bank, central bankers and that currencies don't fluctuate too much as they have done over the past year in part because of commodity prices which have been up and down as economic prospects have moved in both directions. As the leaders get together in Pittsburgh they'll also be concerned with something else the specter of an international trade war launched by protections measures taken by a number of countries, most notably the United States. Just last week, the United States took the decision that it would slap an import tariff on Chinese-made rubber car tires. Those tires are on the low end, not the more expensive tires, but they are a major export for China. China immediately responded that it would launch an investigation of American exports to China of chicken and poultry products and auto parts. This is an ominous sign at the beginning uh, of, an, of a meeting designed to try to clear up such disputes that such a dispute has emerged. In particular, it comes at a time when the United States is also engaged in a major stimulus, larger than any of the other countries that have provided stimulus to get out of the recession, but at the same time attached to that stimulus by American provisions that give preference to U.S. firms over foreign competitors. This has sent a signal of American protectionism not seen since the 1980s. And many worry that the United States, rather than leading the international economy back to good health, is actually lagging, spending more per capita on its stimulus than any other country in the G20. The United States has seen the poorest economic performance in terms of recovery since its initial investment. And with major expensive bills, including health care reform and the prospect that this will push American tax rates up and a climate change bill that will have a heavy impact on industry and other ailing parts of the U.S. economy. Some worry that the U.S. is on track to take us deeper into a global recession, a double dip, if you will, just as signs from Europe and elsewhere are beginning to be hopeful that the recession may end there sooner. All of these things together have given us reason to worry that at Pittsburgh, rather than coming together, the G20 leaders may accuse one another of, uh, of ill intent and bad policies, and rather than being a step forward, Pittsburgh may end up being a step backward. The world will watch carefully, as will the markets, to make sure that what comes out of Pittsburgh is actually more hope uh, and less conflict. My name is Christopher Sands. I'm a senior fellow at the Hudson Institute. And these are just a few words on the G20 meeting in Pittsburgh.